Instead of always starting with a 3D volume, it is sometimes easier to model a 3D object from a 2D shape. 2D shapes, or splines in 3ds Max terminology, are simple geometric shapes that you typically draw in an orthographic view. There are many splines to choose from, starting with the line command. The creation method options are different based on the version of 3ds Max you are using. The drag type option defaults to Bezier in 3ds Max, while it is set to corner in 3ds Max design. This is also true when you load Max or Design initial settings using the custom UI and default switcher. In Corner Bezier mode, you create linear segments with a single click in the viewport and curved segments with a click and drag. A right click exits the command. This method can be difficult to control at creation time. It is usually easier to start simple and build in detail later. To build a simple profile of a wine glass, for example, you can use the corner method for both initial and drag types. Keep in mind that holding the shift key constrains your movement in orthogonal mode. Five points, four segments is all you need to start. In the modify panel, you can access the sub-element of the 2D shape you created, Vertex, Segment, and Spline. In Vertex mode, you can easily relocate one or more vertices using the Move tool. More importantly, you can convert a Vertex type from the default corner type to other types using the Quad menu. In Smooth mode, you are presented with a curvature that you can only control by moving the vertex. In Bezier mode, handles appear, which give you more control over the curvature. As you zoom in, you'll notice that the edges are not so smooth. This can be controlled by increasing the number of steps in the interpolation rollout. The adaptive option provides another smoothing method. This method increases the number of steps when the segments are curved and decreases them when the segments are linear. The Bezier corner method breaks the handles so you can control each one independently. If you need more vertices to control the shape, you can use the Refine tool. This tool inserts a vertex at the point on the shape where the cursor lies. Segment mode lets you edit segments between vertices. You can easily edit segments by moving or rotating them. More importantly, you can divide the segment into different sections. This inserts equidistant vertices, so you do not have to estimate their location using the Refine tool. In Spline mode, you edit the shape globally. One useful tool in spline mode is the outline tool. This creates a double line out of a single shape. You can select the spline, then specify the value in the edit box, or use the outline button and click and drag the spline. This created some hard edges. You can adjust them back at the vertex level. You can use commands such as chamfer and fillet to edit vertices. Chamfer creates cut corners and fillet creates round corners. When two or more vertices are close together, you can weld them into one vertex. This is done by selecting two or more vertices, then clicking the Weld tool. 
For this command to work, the selected vertices must be within the distance specified in the weld threshold. Keep in mind that only the line command gives you direct access to subcomponents. Other shapes are parametric, and you can only access their subobjects after converting them to an editable spline or by adding an edit spline modifier. For example, a simple tabletop can be created using the rectangle tool. Once converted into an editable spline, you can access subcomponents. Divide segments. Transform vertices. And so on. When you create multiple shapes, you can attach them to one spline and perform Boolean operations to clean them up. For example, you can create the cross-section for a table leg using circles. Since these shapes are parametric, you need to turn one of them into an editable spline first. Once that is done, you can use the attach tool to make the other splines part of the original. Remember to exit the attach tool when you are done. Notice that the other circles didn't need to be converted into editable splines to be attached to the original shape. To use Boolean operations on spline, they must intersect one another. With the original spline selected, make sure the union method is selected and then click the boolean button. Pick the splines you wish to union. Switch to a different mode such as subtraction if you want to remove a spline from the result. This created a nice cross section of a table leg. If you need to scale a 2D shape, always perform a scale at the sub-object level to retain its integrity.